And it is a wonderfully mild, dry day in the capital city. We'll have comments from the coaches in a moment. Two things. Uh, turnovers, number one. Uh, whoever doesn't turn it over has got an extremely good chance to win the game. And then who are going to make the big plays? Uh, in big games where you've got uh, some great athletes playing on both the uh, sides of the football who, who are going to make the big play How, how's a big play going to be made and what team is going to make it two things one uh, uh, self that, that self controls and one that uh, maybe the other controls big play big play capability uh, they've got so many big play capability people on their team you're scared they're going to break out any minute that's one big play the other is the old bugaboo mistakes if one of us makes a lot of mistakes, we've had it. You can't survive this game with a lot of mistakes. There are several individual matchups in the ball game today. In fact, so many you can't talk about all of them. But they'll be the thread as we weave the fabric in this college football tapestry, one that shall be remembered for a long time. One matchup involves Florida State running back Amp Lee and middle linebacker Michael Barrow for Miami. You know, not sound arrogant or anything, but I think matched up against the linebacker, I, I can beat most linebackers, you know, not to take anything away from him, but I think I could beat, you know, not only him, but you know, other linebackers also. And I think the thing that you got to avoid with Ampley is that if you sit back and wait, he's just going to shake you out of your shoes. You have to just take it to him. You have to just go up there and put face mask to face mask. <laughs> The series record, and yes, Michael's name was spelled correctly, but you can see Miami has won five of the last six. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Here at Florida State University campus, the number one Seminoles against the number two Hurricanes. Looking at the two teams with Miami receiving, we'll see them on offense. Here are the Miami Springs. They have big playability. They got three wide receivers in at all times, and that is the thing that Miami does best. And for Florida State, big plays. They've given up a lot of big plays on defense, but they also have run four interceptions back for touchdowns. They got big plays going both ways. Florida State right now is introducing its seniors. That's going to take a couple of minutes. Chief Osceola on Renegade waiting to slam the spear into the ground in the center of the stadium and this symbol this meaning has been endorsed by the Seminole tribe and its official but when that spear goes into the ground that means we are at war it's kind of interesting that the Miami Hurricanes have all had their backs turned to the chief and the horse. Here's Jack Arood. He's down there among them. Well, Keith, there's some late-breaking news from the locker room of the Florida State Seminoles. Casey Weldon woke up this morning with a case of laryngitis. When he talks at a normal level, he's okay. But he says, when I raise my voice like I'd have to to check off at the line, I lose it completely. They're going to go to hand signals. They've used both before. But it's not very good to come into a big game without your voice. Certainly isn't. But these are the little things that sometimes become a problem. Here's Chief Osceola. All right. Here comes the paint swappers. And uh, this is a game where these kids know each other. There are no mysteries between these two football teams. It's just a matter of who's going to do what win like neighbors keith they know each other very well a lot of these kids went to school together played in high school against each other and Miami has not been too intimidated by the chief because the last uh, 11 times they played up here they've won nine games on this field the anticipation for this game has been so thick as you see dennis erickson and the remarkable record he has in his third season at miami Came out of the Pacific Northwest. Bobby Bowden. But the, the build-up to this ball game has been so flavorful that you almost hate to let it go. Play the game. <laughs> You've got to play it, though. <laughs> You've got to get rid of it. I mean, they've been, it's, it's ripe. It's, 
Kevin Williams returns it. Remember, we saw him against Penn State. He took the punt back 91 yards. Daryl Spencer will be back there with him. He also is a flyer. And Dan Maury, the redshirt freshman from Tallahassee, will kick it off. You want all of your pins in the right place for a ball game like this. And apparently, everybody has accomplished it. Maury is going to kick it off. The referee for the ball game is Dale Phillips. We play on real grass, and they don't want Kevin Williams to put his hands on the opening kick. It is received, fair caught, back at the 26-yard line by Casey Greer. Gino Toretta, who has been the long ball for Miami since he took over as the starting quarterback and his only loss was at Florida State in 1989. But he does throw the ball down the field, and he throws it to Burners like Copeland, Spencer, and Thomas, and Williams when he's in there. And Coleman Bell, the tight end, is a new name that you probably haven't seen before if you're in a different part of the country than the South. So here's your first play of the ball game. The Miami Hurricane from the 26th. The ball is swung out to McGuire. He's got some room to work. And the big guy from Brooklyn is all the way out to the 40-yard line, and it's a first down for Miami, a pickup of 14 yards. They do stretch you laterally. The big people up front to protect Toretta today, and they must protect Toretta today if the Canes are to win this ball game. Kevin Williams checks into the backfield. Number five know where he is at all times. He's now in motion. No backs in the backfield. Toretta back to throw it. He's got Williams over the middle. It's off his hands. Thrown too hard. A penalty flag is thrown meantime as Florida State is going to be dinged for roughing the quarterback. Number 96, James Cheney was in pounding on Toretta. And I think he's the man that initiated the flag. Keith, this is something interesting here. Here's Williams right here. Normally a wide receiver started out of the backfield. Now he's going to come in motion. The linebacker, the inside linebacker, was Jones, has to come out and cover him. This would be a great matchup all day for Miami. Wide open to the inside. There's no way that a linebacker, Jones, can cover Kevin Williams, one of the fastest players in this ballgame. The ball was thrown hard and off the hands of Williams by uh, Toretta, whose heart's pumping at a pretty good pace, too. And incomplete, but the 15-yard personal foul penalty, a dead ball foul, is no question about acceptance. It comes down to the 44. It is on the Florida State side of the field now, and McGuire is back in there at the running back position and has the ball and has daylight. He has a big game. He's inside the 15 first down for Miami. Florida State's people just overran the play, and all of a sudden it opened up. Take a look from the end zone. It's just a stretch play. FSU overruns it with their linebacker. Some good blocks there by Searcy. The safety fouler, number three, comes up too quickly. And Miami, who has not run the ball that well all year, starts out very well in the first drive. First down, yet just inside the 15-yard line for the Canes. Give it back to McGuire, and he'll pick up a couple of yards, and that's all. The defense of Florida State being tested right now. Ostrzewski, Cheney, Simpson listed as the three down, but actually they play a four-man and sometimes a five-man front with Palmer and Simpson going down. Marvin Jones, the linebacker, is the leader of that big punch. Terrell Buckley has been scintillating in the secondary at the corner position for Florida State. They give him a couple of yards on the carry. McGuire has picked up 31 yards so far in this first possession. Toretta rolls it out, goes to the sidelines, and goes out of bounds at just about the line of scrimmage, which would be the 13-yard line. Carl Simpson was the man who ran him out. That time, Florida State did not give Toretta much time to take a look around the end zone. And everybody was covered, Keith, down. Here's a look at what Miami has done inside the 20-yard line. Amazing. Of 47 times they've been inside the 20, 
They've scored on 36 of them. Now the speedsters Spencer and Williams come to the backfield for Miami. Spencer goes up into a slot with a wide receiver, and again, Williams goes in motion. No backs behind Beretta. Got some room. Takes off for the corner. Won't get there. Penalty flag. They've thrown the flag again as Beretta was hit, having crossed the line. That's a pretty narrow call that time, I thought, because the defender was coming up in a hurry and committed himself. Trying to keep him out of the corner of the end zone. But it's a personal foul call against Florida State. The second time it's been called in this possession. An extra dimension for Miami. You've got four receivers out. Everyone is covered. Toretta with his ability doesn't scramble a lot. Clearly out of bounds when the man makes the play. It's Fowler hitting him out of bounds and the official right there throwing the flag. Pretty hard to stop midair. It is. It's tough to stop your momentum. But you've got to be alert that the quarterback may run out of bounds and you've got to be ready to pull up. They're now trying to determine exactly where it was. Gino went out of bounds. It's going to be around the two. That's where they put the ball. It's first down and goal to go for the Miami Hurricane. So Florida State's defensive people have come out with uh, the chin strap pretty tight. They have been flying around and they've been in the wrong place. But Miami has come out very calmly and very coolly and put things together. They're knocking on the door. Give it to McGuire. He's short. He's got a touchdown. He was inside the pile and rolled into the end zone. And the late call says six. First down inside the five yard line, about the three. Good hit there by Carruthers behind the line of scrimmage, but uh, he gets into the end zone. Carlos Huerta had 157 consecutive extra points until he was broken in the Oklahoma State game. He just calmly walked in after missing another one and uh, popped this one through to start another streak. And so the Hurricanes go to the lead, seven to nothing. Fire total 33 yards in that possession. There were two personal fouls called against the Florida State defense. The strengths now is Florida State will get the ball. Florida State, a great running game. Uh, they also score. They, they're the number third team in the nation in scoring, but Miami leads the nation in scoring defense. So it'll be a battle. Miami just allowing seven points uh, on defense. Florida State averaging 41. Number 33 is Tiger McMillan waiting to receive the kick. Back there with him is Felix Harris, number 24. Werther will kick it off for Miami. Seminoles need to respond now as the Hurricanes have gone down and scored in their first possession. They got some help from the Noles. This is at the two-yard line for Harris. And he's out near the 24 where he is taken down. So Casey Weldon coming to the ball yard today with a case of laryngitis. But the numbers down at the bottom tell you something about it. Only six interceptions versus 21 touchdowns. He is the leader of this offensive unit. Amp Lee, the tailback, can be brilliant. One of the slipperiest running backs anywhere. Edgar Bennett, the solid man. The wide out for all. Pretty good. Lonnie Johnson, a very dependable tight end. So here come the Noles with their first play of this day. And it is an historic day for them. This is the first time they've ever been involved in a game involving one and two. And Lee. That's what I mean. He is a very, very difficult fella to get a hold of. There ain't no handles on him. Herbert James uh, brought him down. Here's the offensive front for Florida State. Now they run about 271 pound average. That's about 13 pounds heavier than the defensive front of the uh, Miami Hurricanes. Kevin Mancini has come off of a torn ligament to regain the starting position with Mike Morris going from tackle back to guard his normal position. First down on the first play of the game. The Seminoles. Ball is just over the 35. It goes back to Mancini and this time Miami's quickness shows up and there's a loss of about a yard. 
Madaris and Miller in on the tackle. The defensive unit for Miami in features Rusty Madaris, who is their best pass rusher. Darren Smith, uh, an honor-seeking linebacker inside. Really a tough guy. He's the anchor. The secondary for the Canes is a good one. And uh, they're all relatively equal ability. The one thing that distinguishes them, they can run. I guess you can't play football in Miami if you can't run. Weldon gives it back to Lee. That little quickness, that little juke, that little step. And you got a penalty flag thrown back up the field with a couple of uh, fellas getting into uh, a bit of a scuffle. Patrick, Kevin Patrick, 86, defensive end for Miami. One of those involved, along with Robbie Baker, I think it was. Dale Phillips now, the referee, looks like he might be in for a busy day, at least until such time emotion subsides just a little bit. They're talking to Michael Barrow, number 56, the linebacker, and the penalty is going against the Seminoles. So look at Rusty Madaris, 98. It's Mancini, number 67. Whoa. Now, that ain't hardly legal, is it? I mean, that's that's a move that a lot of offensive tackles will use. Uh, if you get it up around the, sh the head, it'll be a penalty. But if it's down around the shoulder pad or the arm area, it's all right. You're just trying to help the uh, end upfield. You're usually running a draw inside on that play. I do not think, however, that was the penalty. No, it was not. Yeah. The penalty was a hold. Yes. So that backs him up to the 23-yard line. That's the third flag against Florida State this ball game. Here comes Van Lee up the middle. Edgar Bennett up the middle with it. Edgar's a 6'1", 210-pound senior from Jacksonville. Very, very good pass receiver, and he works in that uh, short zone where the linebackers hang out. Aaron Smith, number 45, the, the best player defensively on the Miami team. Uh, came in with a little bit of a hip problem. Strained hip, stays his ground, fights off the uh, blocker. Not many people can bring uh, Amp Lee down, but Darren Smith just did one-on-one. -on -one. Third down. They need 20. Blitz comes. Weldon stands in. Got a lot of green in front of him. Pulls it down and takes off. He won't pick up his first down. He gets it back to about the original line of scrimmage, the 36-yard line. Now the Seminoles are going to have to punt it away. And the man who will be called upon to do that is Scott Player. He hasn't had a real big year. He's averaging right at 39 yards per kick and sometimes is prone to kick it low on a line drive. And if you kick a low line drive and you got this fellow standing back there waiting for it, I mean, it's grabbed the China. Well, Bowden kicked away from him on the kickoff. Let's see what they do on the punts. He tried to kick it away from him. Williams goes back at the 20, takes it on the bounce. First man missed him. Second man missed him. Third man gets a hold of him, and now three more take him down. It's a 45-yard punt, and it's an eight-yard return with 10.03 to go in the first quarter, and Miami ready for their second possession. Seminoles have had a hard time against the Miami Hurricanes. Here comes Miami now. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Three wide outs. Kevin Williams is in the backfield behind Toretta. Now they've got four wide outs. But all can fly. And Toretta back to throw it. He goes for Williams. He's got double coverage. He drops the football. It was on his hands. And he slams his hand down on the ground. Frustrated he didn't make the catch because the ball was there. He had the linebacker coverage. Just what he wanted. Take a look at the Hurricane quick strike offense this year. It's just unbelievable. 35 of their drives have taken less than three minutes. And you can see there the number of drives have taken less than two minutes and one minute. The first drive took a minute and 53 seconds to score. And here's how they've done this year in the first quarter. McGuire checks into the backfield behind Toretta now. They stay in the trip to the bottom of the picture. Swing it out to McGuire. He's out there one-on-one. -on -one. A little quick move, and he got around the defender and picked up something out of nothing, really. He just stepped right by number 89, Howard Lincoln. When that back motions out of the backfield, Keith, that they call it a no back, 
He's getting uh, Dinkins, a linebacker, or the inside linebacker, Carruthers, or Jones, the covering. Miami will take that matchup uh, all day long. Spencer leaves. Williams back. Williams is in there next to the uh, next to the ball or among the wideout. He's the closest to the ball. Coretta getting pressure and they've got him. 45, Kirk Carruthers, their first blitz of the day, and it pays big dividends. right up the middle the center tries to get over there it's just a miscommunication he bumps him for a second Toretta obviously thought that the man was going to be blocked two two men were blocking one defensive man and Carruthers came free Paul Schneider whose average is uh, just under 40 punts it out of there gets a good spin on it gets good carry on it to Terrell Buckley Buckley's got a little room and this is up to the 41-yard line. 40-yard punt. Florida State will go to work, trailing by seven. It's Florida State's football. First down at their own 41-yard line, Miami leading by a score of seven to nothing. Seminoles have made a lot of mistakes here in this first quarter. They've been the tighter team. Casey Weldon gets a little pressure, gets the pass away. The pass is incomplete. It is overthrown, and there was solid coverage by Miami's Ryan McNeil on Shannon Baker. Shannon Baker, number one, is the flyer out of the uh, wide receiver position for the Seminole. Keith, you mentioned that Florida State has been the tighter team. I think that's a good point, and one of the reasons may not be obvious, may be a contradiction, because playing at home in front of your own fans, sometimes you can be a little tight because everybody expects you to do so well. Miami, on the other hand, knows they're here by themselves, just the players. They can be freewheeling and be loose, and they've jumped down in front. They show blitz. Armistead started trying to anticipate. Now has to withdraw, but he's still going to go, and they run empty up the middle. When you blitz, you leave some uh, daylight behind uh, where the linebackers normally work. Early Brown and Darrell Williams, the safeties, have to step up and occupy the territory. They're close to a first down on Lee's carry. Well, one of the things that Bobby Bowden said uh, coming into the ball game is that Miami blitzed more last year against the Seminoles than he's seen them, and they've continued that, uh, that uh, defensive strategy this year. He said when Jimmy Johnson was at Miami, he never would blitz. It is third down and one. It's Casey, he has not lost in 15 starts. Started uh, at the beginning, the middle of last year, and has won every ball game. Working today with a sore throat. Mild case of Larenzak. Pitch it to Lee. Penalty flag is down. Came from the umpire. Could be a holding call. Hang on. That is a first down. Good run by Lee. Good blocking by the front, but he may come back. That is the fourth major penalty by Florida State. Mancini, 67. Well, he's been out now. He's had uh, he had the sore knee and the torn ligament. He's had a remarkable recovery, but he's not game sharp. There was some question, a lot of question, as to whether or not he would play, uh, even dress for this ball game. He is he is their biggest offensive lineman, and that was a very big penalty. Goes from a first down back to a third and long. The ball was sitting over right around the Miami 40 yard line. So it goes from first down to third down and 14. Because remember the rules this year you are penalized from the point of the foul on holding and clipping. So let's see if Casey Weldon will air it out here. He's got three wideouts. Yep. Good coverage, too, but he lets it go. And it is incomplete. There's your flag. You had double coverage back there with uh, Hurley Brown and Ryan McNeil, and they did a pretty good job on Shannon Baker, and the back judge watched it for a while and finally said, well, man, that's a little too much, and he threw the flag. 
So a penalty call against Miami now is going to help Florida State keep the football. We have pass interference on the defense. First down. The Hurricanes are in a two deep zone. And Baker is just going to get deep on the inside safety. That's Brown. He's going to knock him right here. He's going to knock him off. He falls into him. It's a good call by Bowden because third and 15, you want to get it downfield, give yourself a chance. Dennis Erickson doesn't like it, but it's a first down for the Seminoles. At the Miami 48-yard line, Miami leading in the ball game off their opening possession, 7 to nothing. This is the fourth time Miami has been involved in a football game involving number one and two. It is the first time for Florida State. Casey Weldon rolls out and get a little more room, a little more time, runs out of time. Armstead, number one, was blocked, bounced up from it, and joined Rusty Medeiros to make the tackle on the Florida State quarterback. Monday night, ABC Sports offers the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins down in Joe Robbie Stadium. Dolphins have won two in a row, and the Bills, well, you know about them. Live action begins at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, ABC's Monday Night Football. Loss on the play, back to near the 47. Second down and 15. Weldon goes the other way, gets his pass off. He's got an amp lead down there. He's got it inside the five. touchdown but it's first and goal to go Florida State Amp Lee was flanked outside this foot receiver this foot receiver went down and ran about a 10 yard curl and Lee kept going Weldon rolls out to get a little bit more time to throw takes a hit by crime the ball is delivered and it's a great throw considering under the pressure he was under that is the longest pass completion against the Miami Hurricane this season. 51 yards. First down and goal to go. Florida State at the two. Miami has not allowed a touchdown in the first half this year. This is what Florida State has done inside the 20. Lee with the ball. Great play by Hurley Brown, the strong safety. Number eight. In and just made a terrific defensive play. You're seeing some of the reasons why they haven't given up a touchdown in the first half. Speed is number one, but quickness, aggressiveness off the line and getting across the line of scrimmage and into the offense's uh, area, uh, territory, side of the line of scrimmage is one of the reasons why Erickson's team has not given up a touchdown in the first half. Let's see if they stay with a power eye set. Bobby wants a timeout. call it. Casey Weldon stands up to throw it. Now gets it off and it is incomplete. He just sort of threw that one away. It was in the general vicinity of Kez McCorby. Now it is third down and goal for Florida State. Florida State's uh, place kicking field goal unit has sort of been by committee this year. It has not been a particularly outstanding facet of the team. Well, it was really a, uh, the only weakness on the team earlier in the year, but now they've got a field goal kicker, Thomas, that has had some success uh, making five of the last six field goals. But they're not thinking field goal here. They want a touchdown. Third and goal from the seventh. Pressure coming backside. Weldon throws it back the other way. Drop by Lonnie Johnson, the tight end. The ball was underthrown as Weldon turned back to let the ball go. Kevin Patrick was just right in his face. And the pass was a little bit short. Well, you know, Bobby Bowden has barnyard plays, and that may have been a half a barnyard play, but what it says is he didn't have anything better on third down to get the ball into the end zone this early in the ball game. It makes you wonder about his offense inside the five yard line against the Hurricanes. 25 yard field goal try by Jerry Thomas is good. And so the Seminoles will get it on the board. 
Five minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. It is now Miami 7 and Florida State 3. Bobby Bowden had this comment among many this past week about playing in the game as number one. I love it. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's, it's stimulating. It's, uh, you don't have to worry about getting your kids up. They don't either, you know? But, but the fact is, you, you, emotionally, your kids can't go through this very often, you know? And if it wasn't for the emotion and the injury, you, you'd like it every Saturday nearly. He might be a tad cranky right now, though, because they didn't get it in the end zone. But uh, it's a little bit surprising, Keith, on that call, because yeah. that was a little bit of a trick play. The tight end blocked and fell down and then ran all the way opposite the way the quarterback was rolling out. And uh, it's a slow play. Yeah. To develop. Well, you, and, and, and you're trying to trick somebody. You're not yep. trying to beat them with your yep. talent. You're trying to trick them. Yep. You don't. You, you just can't. You don't have time against that kind of speed and quickness. That's a high hanger. It'll be a Miami ball, 21-yard line. Here's Roger Twybell in New York. Thank you very much, Keith. Indiana at Ohio State. And from 11 yards out, Trent Green looking in the end zone. There are two men over there, and Rod Coleman's going to make the catch. The extra point was no good, and Indiana leads Ohio State 6 to nothing. Let's go back to Tallahassee. There are the numbers on the Florida State possession. Miami ball, first down at their own 21-yard line. Toretta gives it to McGuire. McGuire gets away again. There's a penalty flag thrown, and the Seminoles run him down and take him down at the 17-yard line. They're flagged all over the place. When emotion is as high as it has been for some time for this game, you're going to get a lot of flags thrown very often. But by now, the players should have calmed down a little bit. They've both been in a couple of times. We have holding on the offense. Ten yards. Let's check in with Jack Aruba. Well, Keith, our first major injury of importance, number 55, Marvin Jones, won't be back on defense at least for the remainder of this quarter. He was poked in the eye. He's got blurred vision. They've taken him to the locker room. They're icing it down and washing it out. They do hope to have him back in the second quarter. Whoa. That is a major, major loss for the Florida State defense. That puts Ken Alexander, 240-pound sophomore from Austin, Texas, in that position. They accept the penalty, move it back to first down and 22, and Larry Jones, the big guy, is in there for Miami. He is a low. Toretta stands up on the fake, throws to Coleman Bell, number 17. He's a six foot two, 225 pound flyer, masquerading as a tight end. <laughs> he's caught nine balls in the last two ball games, so he's on a roll. The Hurricanes have won. The last seven meetings against a number one ranked team. That is pretty special. The Canes come in here very confident. Flag again, and it's coming back. And I think this one is a personal foul. So Miami now is getting into the personal foul gig. Florida had two called against them. Florida State did in the first possession by Miami. And now the Canes are going to get one. They have a personal foul. That's half the distance. Still be first down. So that first down will be 23 yards now as the ball comes on back inside the five to the four. Jones, that big 245 pound running back with the ball. Comes out across the 10. All at the 11. So he picks up seven yards on the carry at four minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. Larry Jones will play a lot before he is finished. He is a freshman. He is from Gainesville, where the Gators live. Second down and 20. Loretta moves him around. Probably changed the play. 
Pumps it. Let's it go. No good. He threw it on a line intended for Horace Copeland, and Horace could not turn back in and run it down. It'll be third down and 20. So trying to do his work on Terrell Buckley. Here's Buckley right here. You may remember him. He's intercepted three touchdowns and run him back, or three interceptions and run him back. It's a little out and up. They're trying to get him a little fake, a little hitch right there. Buckley reacts and then jams the receiver. It's all right in college as long as the ball is not in the air. Trying to get something uh, big on Buckley. Convert here or give it up. No blitz. Toretta lets it go down the middle of the field. It is incomplete. Copeland running with John Davis. They got a little tangled up, but no flag. And Miami now will have to punt. Florida State should get pretty good field position out of this. Buckley will go back to accept the punt from Paul Snyder. Snyder's first kick today was a 45-yarder. Buckley has great speed. High kick. What a knuckling. Fair catch called by Buckley, but the ball is kicked well away from him. And it trickles away and goes out of bounds at the 43-yard line. It was a 46-yard punt. At the conclusion of today's game, a Chevrolet most valuable player from each team chosen. 21st year that Chevrolet has participated in the scholarship program, giving $1,000 to each of the university goes to the general scholarship fund so Florida State last time they had the ball they went down settle for three Let's see what happens here Matt Fryer Eric Terrell check in at wide positions for the Seminole Florida State has done on first down one pass out of five plays. Weldon is one out of four for 51 yards. The completion to Amp Lee. I remember Fryer showed up big in the Syracuse game last time we were here. What a big day. Up man, Bennett. He gets a pretty good greeting from Patrick Riley. Time remaining, first quarter now, and even three minutes. Riley, who made that tackle, a true freshman. The Hurricanes really do not have any big defensive tackles in the middle of that line. That's why Florida State likes to take advantage running up the middle. They don't have the big linemen that they used to have. Uh, Russell Maryland, uh, Cortez Kennedy, Jerome Brown, all first-round draft choices who have since gone on to play in the National Football League. Second down, 11. Weldon gets it off. They've got a screen set up for Ant Lee, they thought. But Michael Barrow just came like a runaway wagon and belted it. He went right between the blockers and nailed him at the 44-yard line. Well, you heard uh, Michael Barrow on the beginning of the telecast saying that uh, he was going to try and be right with Amp Lee the entire ball game, and he uh, certainly was on that screenplay. It'll be third down at about 14 now. As we go inside, two minutes to go in the first quarter. They've just about put their dents in now. They're starting to lay some licks on each other. Settling down to play the game. Pressure on. Passes away quickly to Terrell, but he's got no place to go because the blockers never got to him to help him. And so as a result, it is fourth down. Florida State has a very poor possession for them. Good one, however, for the Canes because their defensive people were really flying around. Again, Scott Flair has to kick to Kevin Williams. He hasn't yet. <laughs> Williams came over and ran it down. This time he aims it right at him and lets it go, and it's a tail dragger that takes a sharp kick out of bounds. Up at the 22-yard line. So at 103 to go in the first quarter, the Florida 
State Seminoles give it up to Miami at the 22. 35 yards on that punt with no return. Dennis Erickson talking earlier this week was asked, is it easier to be number two chasing number one? He said. Too. When it comes to this game, I really don't uh, believe that it makes any difference. It's uh, as you go through the season, it's it's a little harder being number one. Uh, however, at the University of Miami, every time we play, regardless of whether we're one or two or three, uh, uh, they take their best shots at us as we get to this game. Now it doesn't make any difference. Pass intended for Daryl Spencer is incomplete. Off his hands, up the middle. Again, they send those fellas right into the middle, trying to force Florida State to uh, cover him with a linebacker. Well, Spencer w could have caught that ball. He saw some uh, some defensive backs coming and uh, decided that he was going to look at them and not the ball and actually could have caught it. Both quarterbacks off to a relatively slow start. Toretta now is two of seven for 19 yards. Florida State, in case you don't know it, has been ranked number one the entire season. Been on top all year. This is the big guy. Loses the football. Florida State recovers the fumble. They stripped it away from McGuire. Ostaziski covered it. It's just a draw play. Jones thinks he's got a nice hole. Ostrzewski, 75, spins around and knocks the ball out. A nice play, ground level. Ostrzewski, number 75, spins out. That's Joe. Jones doesn't even see him. Jones thought he had a clear sailing through the uh, interior line. Joe Ostrzewski knocked it out. Henry Ostrzewski recovered it. <laughs> That's a big twin the twins, yeah. Yep. 290 each. Florida State has the football. Making a break for themselves at the Miami 24. Casey Weldon back. Gets his pass off down the middle. It is caught inside the five-yard line by Edgar Bennett. I told you he was a great pass receiver down where the heavy hitters work. And there's a good example of what he can do for you. Well, here's what they like to do. Bennett is here. They're going to slide him right down the middle of the field. The two safeties will split. Play action to the deep man helps hold the linebackers. Bennett slides down. That's probably as well as that play has been covered most of the year. The two safeties of Miami react well. Bennett, an outstanding receiver. And it's first down and goal to go just inside the five. Uh, with Amp Lee and Edgar Bennett setting up in the backfield. But now they take off their hats and they'll rest as Florida State talks timeout. And we'll pause five seconds right here to allow our ABC station to tell you who they are. This is WFTV Channel 9 Orlando. Twenty-three seconds to go in the first quarter. Florida State in the timeout threatening. Let's spend a moment with Jack Aroot. Well, Keith, you watched that terrific catch by Edgar Bennett. One would think that he would collect trophies and memorabilia from his exploits on the field. But when we visited him in his, in his dormitory room, he collects stuffed animals. He says he has over 60 of them that he collects, and he's done this for about four years. Right now, his coach and teammates want him to stuff that thing in the end zone. You can see the numbers on Bennett's running in 1991. His catching has been the more obvious and more prominent success story for him. Do you think this is a series now? Is it? Is this where Bobby Bowden uh, decides to just belly up and try to show him uh, that they can stuff it in there? Well, he's going to run what is best. If, if first down, he feels like he's got a pass play that he can throw it in. This is the best play to throw when you're inside the five-yard line. But uh, he may also have some other uh, tricks up his sleeve. And he may just uh, step up there and give the ball to Amp Lee and let him go three times. Lee is not a power runner. The, do the, 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 the defense will be very aggressive and slow developing stuff, misdirection stuff is not that good down here. Here's a comparison to quarterbacks. Weldon hitting the long pass to Amp Lee to get a lot of that yardage. Throws a lot to his backs. Uh, the big catch there by uh, Edgar Bennett. Bennett's 90th career catch was that last uh, pass he caught from Weldon. 
Fryer and Terrell stay in the ball game. Shannon Baker is not out there. The starter at that flanker position. Hurricane defense. Number one in the nation against the uh, scoring. It's uh, gets points. Florida State trying to change that right here on yep. first down and go just in the five inside the five. It's amp lead of a two picked up three yards on the carry. So he had a pretty good size hole over the left side but he never, never really got his shoulders turned and his head turned toward the goal line. Well, that's the problem running sideways when the defense is so aggressive across the line of scrimmage. You may have a hole for a second but there's always going to be a linebacker or a defensive back to fill it. Paul Moore, number 32, and Sean Jackson, 35, come into the ball game. The first quarter is going to expire. So Florida State will be threatening as we begin quarter number two, but after one, it's 7-3 Miami. And uh, it looks to me like that thing's a lot closer to the three-yard line than it is the two, and when they marked it at the end of the carry by Lee, they clearly had shown him with a three-yard pickup. Oh, looks like Florida State Second down and goal. Second major threat they've had. Trying for the lead right here. Give it inside to the big guy, Paul Moore, a senior fullback at 240 pounds, and he has the ball just inside the two-yard line, picked up about a yard or so on the carry. Now, it is third down and goal. Keith, uh, Florida State got this ball on a turnover. Miami has turned the ball over 19 times previously to this ball game, and the defense has not allowed the opposing team to take that ball in for a score. 17 of the 19 times the, the defense has stopped them, two times they've allowed field goals. Florida State now gets a second tight end, Hart, into the game. Weldon gives it off to the big man up front, uh, Moore, the fullback, and he's not there. He's a half a yard short of the goal line, and it is fourth down. Bowden feels content with just trying to run the ball inside of those, uh, inside of the uh, defensive line. The two, two tackles, not very heavy, 248 and 255. <laughs> you got to go for it here, I would think. Yep, I would say it's time to, to get some kind of judgment. Got to find out something. Ball is at the one. Back into the ball, resting at the one-yard hash mark. Fourth down. Fullback touchdown. Paul Moore. Straight ahead, give it to the first man. The tight end on the far side got a good block. Jerry Thomas now on the field for the extra point try. Ricocheted through. Somebody hit that ball. And I think it bounced off one of the Seminoles and bounced through. Block on Golden. There's the crease you need. Went a little bit wider, got the touchdown. Show me that Exterminals have gone to the lead, 10 to 7. Jerry Thomas has now hit 17 out of 17 in extra point kicks. And they'll kick it away to Miami. Number five is Williams, 35 Spencer. And Williams in particular is terrified when he's got that ball. And they don't want to kick it to him. They'll give up yardage and let him have the ball all the way out on the 32-yard line. ABC's college football will have regional action for you following uh, this matchup, number one and two, Notre Dame, Penn State, Michigan at Illinois, Oregon, UCLA out on the coast. And all of those teams are bowl teams, or at least potential. 
This is Miami's best starting field position of the ball game. Best point in which to start a possession. And Kevin Williams is in the backfield now going in motion. No back. Little quick pop to Spencer. And Spencer picks up a first down for Miami at the 44-yard line. They make you do everything defensively. They spread you out. They stretch you. They try this. They try that. They just, if you don't stay alert, they'll just eat your life. Well, when they did go no back, then Florida State moved up and blitzed on the outside. Toretta saw it and popped the uh, receiver, Spencer, right where the linebacker left. McGuire, 47-yard line on the carry, three-yard pickup. We're in the second quarter of play. Florida State leads Miami 10 to 7. Miami scored in its very first possession of the ball game, helped considerably by two personal foul penalties by the Seminoles. Florida State's first effort at scoring wound up in a field goal. They scored the touchdown on a fourth down from the one. First time this year that Miami has given a touchdown in the first half. Toretta's pass misses Williams. Gino Toretta from Pano, California. Brother Jeff is also a quarterback at Miami. That's right, Pano, California. <laughs> and play college football. We have four wideouts working here. Got a penalty flag. Ball is thrown away. If it is against Miami. Then Florida State will be in position to make them punt. It is against Miami. Well, they were blitzing. Two men, uh, 31 is Brown, 97 yeah, is Freeman. Foul. Watch at the end. Brown almost uh, gets a foul on himself. You can't go up around the headgear, but uh, I don't well, he think raised that was, his arms, wasn't think. severe enough to call yeah. him. Yeah. By raising his arms, I think that prevented it. So the uh, early start by somebody puts him in a circumstance of third and 12 and a half, close to 13. And again, no back. Here they go, like a cubby of quail, but the blitz is on, and you got a face mask call coming up against the Seminoles. And for all the world, I think Carl Simpson, as he came blitzing in, actually he wouldn't be blitzing, but somebody reached in there and got him to look like on the face. Let's see. It's a holding. They'll decline it, so it goes the other way. Now Miami will have to punt. Well, that was one of the keys for Miami coming into the ball game. Could the offensive line of the Hurricanes block the Seminole pass rush, give him time to throw? So Florida State now trying to get something uh, in the degree of control in this thing here in the second quarter. Oh, that punch just barely clears the stack, and Buckley runs away from it. He had no chance, and he just left it alone and ran off the field because there were five Hurricanes down there with the ball. 45-yard punch. Look at that last punt. It was partially deflected up the middle. That's Brooks, number 10, a true freshman who really gets in and roughs the punter. But look at the official top left of your screen. Gives the indication that the ball was tipped, partially deflected. And if you do get part of the ball, you can hit the punter. I'd say they got a lucky roll, the Hurricanes, uh, for a ball that was deflected. They got a nice, uh, nice kick out of it. They got a 20-yard roll. Buckley ran away from it. If he stayed back there and made the fair catch, it been different. 12 10 to go in the first half. Florida State's ball at their own 23 yard line. First down. Weldon quickly 
Comes outside with it to Kevin Knox. And Knox is across the 35 to the 36 and a first down. And here's Roger Twible. Thanks, Keith. At Death Valley, Maryland and Clemson. And this in the second quarter, Deshaun Cameron will go deep. 43 yards to Terry Smith for the touchdown. Clemson goes out on top 17 to 7. The Tigers with a win today capture the ACC and on their way to the Citrus Bowl. Keith. Thank you, Roger, at the 36-yard line. First down, Florida State. Bennett and Lee behind Wilder. Five-man defensive line, Keith. Coming, coming, coming. Good blocking by the Seminoles. The pass is incomplete. The pass intended for 85, Lonnie Johnson. And he was available. Hurricanes took out a defensive back, slid in a fifth defensive lineman. Sonny Lubick, the defensive coordinator, will do that occasionally when he thinks that the Seminoles are trying to run the football. It'll be second down and 10 from the 36 yard line. These people know how to do that. The Tomahawk chop. <laughs> well, they originated, didn't they? That's right. It's theirs. <laughs> it all came from here. Blitz. Lee. And Armstead makes a good play. Jesse Armstead is a 220-pound junior from Dallas. And he made a fine play there to stop Amp Lee because Amp had some room. Well, what Miami, what Miami is trying to do, fifth, five defensive linemen on the first down. Here are the linebackers. Watch these two linebackers as they're blitzing right through the uh, the uh, center guard gaps. The toss is wide. Now the strong safety. Brown, eight, gets up and gets a piece of the tackle. Want to stop the run, take the run away from him, and force him to throw the football. You don't want to give him the run and the pass. Third down and nine. Number 76, Mark Caesar, 290-pound junior, Newark, New Jersey. Makes that big play, and it'll be hunting time for Florida State. The good play by Caesar. He lost his helmet in the process, but that was really a coverage sack. There was nobody open downfield. Weldon had to hold it, and Caesar was there. So at 10.50 to go in the first half, Florida State will punt it. Williams waits. Player, no pressure on him. He kicks it away from Kevin Williams. And good kick. That's knocked out of bounds at the 31 yard line. He kicked it across the field, all the way across, because he did not knock that thing in Kevin Williams' hand. It's a 38 yard punt, no return. Tonight, after the games are over, stay tuned to ABC for a great Saturday night. Angela and Tony getting close to getting hitched on who's the boss. Followed by growing pains. Then after the young writers, the commission. Tonight, all here on ABC. Here comes Miami. First down at the 31. Williams. Kevin Williams gets eight. That play, the reverse, has worked well for Miami most of the year with the speed of Williams, but Florida State has a great deal of speed also, and they caught up with him. One of them was Marvin Jones, the inside linebacker who had a blurred vision, was poked in the eye, is back in the ballgame, obviously. Second down and two for the team. Ball is at the 39. will be close to the first down. Take a look at the first half possessions. Miami took the uh, opening kickoff and went for a touchdown in seven plays. And since then, the four drives since then, they have not made a first down. They're bringing the change to measure. Dale Phillips, we told you, the referee. The umpire called Crawley. Lee Reuter is the head linesman. First down. Billy Smith, field judge, line judge Ed Jackson, Carter Lohr, the side judge, and Virgil Valdez, the back judge. Keith, it's a, it's a low-scoring game. The defense is, it may look as though the coaches are conservative, but I think it's the impressiveness of the 
speed and quickness of the defense that's really muzzling the offense. McGuire. That's a good move by McGuire, boy. That's a tough, tough run by the big guy from Brooklyn. Boy, you got that right. A couple of uh, jukes in the backfield. It was almost a four-yard loss. Big run. Here it is from the other side. That's Dinkins, 89, an outstanding linebacker. And then he just runs through some people. Big play. Wire out, Jones in. First down for the Canes. The ball now on the Seminole side of the field. Look at Jones. Terrell Buckley finally gets him out. Jones, a 245 pounder. And he shows his straightaway speed there. He just put his head down and headed for the sideline. Jones is getting some playing time, Keith, yep. because of the suspension to uh, Martin Patton, who was uh, who has started actually at that remaining back position the last two ball games. Another first down, just inside the Florida State 30. Loretta changes the play. Passes away. Intercepted. Intercepted at the 12 yard line by Terrell Buckley. Well, Buckley is going to be off to our far right here as we take a look at it. Gino is throwing it to some other receiver, not the man that Buckley is covering. But Buckley, with his great vision, it's 10th reception right here. Buckley's going to go. He's trying to throw the man that's going to be hooking into this area. Now watch as Buckley goes back, has good vision the entire way. The man that he's covering goes straight down. He sees the ball, dives back for it. 10th interception of the year. He leads the nation in interceptions. 19th in his career. First down, Florida State. They stop the game on the turnover. Up the middle goes Ant Lee. And he's to the 16. Harold Williams, the free safety, and Darren Smith, the strong side of the linebacker. Bring it down. You know, for a career, Keith, you mentioned he's had uh, 19, I think, and uh, he's averaged 25 yards per, per return when he's intercepted a pass. He has a huge play, a second play of the game against Michigan. This is Lee, searching. Ain't no treasure at the end of that hunt. Rusty Medeiros jumped it. Kind of interesting in the rushing yards. Uh, Miami's run for 74. Florida State, on the other hand, only 23. Rusty Medeiros, 98. And Mancini, 67, the battle up front. A good job by Madaris just fighting off, going down the line of scrimmage, waiting for the runner to come to it. Loss on the play of a yard, third down and seven for the no. This is Edgar Bennett. Short of his first down. Florida State is now 0 for 6. Third down conversions. The Mancini's hurt. Shot of Buckley. Uh, you know, he, he, is, he is number two all time in career interception return yards. That is uh, quite a feat for only 19 interceptions. Kevin Mancini yep. is the man bent over out there, and they're looking at that sore knee. Yep. He has come back remarkably from a knee injury. He may have to leave the ball game, and if they do, then uh, Mike Morris will move over to the tackle position. And Patrick McNeil will move in at the guard position. The game summary reflected there. Amp Lee is total yardage. Most of that comes from that 51-yard pass reception that he had, which set up the field goal. 
Fourth down and one. They'll have to punt it out of there. It's a low line drive, and it's again kicked away from Kevin Williams. Takes a pretty good roll for Florida State and goes out of bounds at the Miami 34. Here comes the Canes again now after a 45 yard punt. For Toretta, three for 10 in the ball game, an interception 30 yards. All three of his completions have been to running backs. But running backs on the Miami scheme of things are same as wideout. They're just receivers. Toretta's pass down the middle. It is caught by Spencer. And ball comes out as he goes down. But it'll not be a fumble. He was down at the 46-yard line. The Florida State 46. That's the first pass caught by a wide receiver for the University of Miami. That's good call. McGuire lines up in the backfield. Has the ball going outside. Palmer and Jones put him out of bounds. Keith, we just got word that Kevin Mancini, the offensive tackle, there you take a look at him, felt something pop in his knee and is off on the sideline moving around on it, but uh, to keep him out for a while, he may be back a little bit later. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. The ball rests at the 43-yard line of Florida State. It is second down and seven, and Larry Jones is in the backfield. Pressure. They got him. Take him down at the 46. It was Carl Simpson. Junior from Baxley, Georgia. Third sack of Toretta. The offenses are frustrated. Take a look. They want to get the ball to Williams right here. He's going to run a shallow uh, uh, line route. Just a quick screen type of thing. Comes in. Now watch the linebacker. Hold it. If you stop it right there, you see the linebacker is all over him. That's the defense. Well coached defense on these offenses here today. Third down and ten. That is first down. Big play there. The Hurricanes needed something positive. Something from an area that they don't expect it, and they don't expect Toretta to pick up many first downs, obviously. The Seminoles don't either. They were involved with one the blitz, two the coverage, and suddenly the quarterback is uncovered. The first down, the ball rests right at the 33-yard line on the Florida State side, and McGuire is back in. Has it. Two yards. Joe Ostaszewski, number 75 at the bottom. The Ostaszewski boys are from Boynton Beach. Joe's at 265. Henry's, uh, they list him at 265, but I think Henry's bigger. <laughs> How do you know? He looks bigger. <laughs> I saw Papa Ostaszewski in the uh, Seminole offices yesterday. He wasn't as big as those two guys. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and eight, Toretta's pass completes the Jones out of the backfield. Pretty good lick there from Abraham, but Jones goes ahead and gets the first down for Miami. So the Canes now have got a threat going. First down at the Florida State 21. The defensive play for the Sebastian. Ibis is the last bird to leave before the storm and the first to return. So they say. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever really been around to check. Sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Nobody made <any> sense. <laughs> the Red has still got it. Ball is slapped out of there on the tip. It is intercepted. Marvin Jones has the interception, but it was 
tipped by Richard Cove, number 16. Three turnovers now by Miami. This one comes at 428 to go in the first half. Bottom of your screen, right between the goal posts, that's Cole's number 16, gets in before the tight end gets the ball. Knocks it up in the air from the right side. Look at this athletic play by this middle linebacker. Jones' vision must be restored. There's a look at the Jones dropping back. Sees the ball. Leads his team in tackle. They take over at the 13-yard line. Casey Weldon has a lot of time. Gets away from it. Now he needs to throw it and get rid of it, and he does. And they're going to give him a catch up at the 30. Warren Hart, 260-pound sophomore. Well, it's, it's, it's not as the offense is, is drawing it up, that's for sure. But Casey Weldon is making the plays where Toretta is not. Scrambles. This is just all ad lib now. This is just ability. Get outside, find somebody, and get the ball to him. That's Darren Prine, defensive end, sophomore out of Aurora, Colorado, leaving the field for Miami. First down, Florida State, just beyond their own 30. Weldon, 6 for 10 now at 103 yards. Most people consider Weldon and Desmond Howard of Michigan your prime Heisman candidates at this point of the season. Weldon with a major showcase this week. Desmond Howard gets his next week when Michigan plays Ohio State here on ABC Sports. On first down, Weldon keeps it, throws it quickly. Pass caught by Knox and picked up six yards. Here's Roger again. Thank you very much, Keith. At Ohio State, Indiana missed a field goal attempt and the Buckeyes, Carlos Snow, from six yards out, will take it up the middle for the touchdown. 26 of the 32 Ohio State touchdowns this year have been on the ground. They lead a 10-6 second quarter. Let's go back to Keith and Bob in Tallahassee. All right, Roger, one of the things that's happening here for Weldon, Casey Weldon holds the ball a long time. So as a result, virtually every time he throws a pass, he's getting back. Like that. Pass is away. Accepted by Charles Farms and Miami's cooking at the 40-yard line of Florida State. That was a pass that had something taken off of it when Medeiros hit Weldon. The pressure is going to come from the left side of the screen as Medeiros will get there right there. Takes a little bit off of it, forces the ball to hang. Farms sees it. The ball was not on target. That's the fourth turnover of the ball game and the first one for the Hurricanes. And it's first down, Keynes, at the Seminole 40 with 3.49 to play, and McGuire lines up behind Ferretta. He's got the ball. And he goes down pretty much on the line of scrimmage because he had a collision with Marvin Jones. Marvin's big brother Fred was quite a linebacker here at Florida State himself. You know, Marvin Jones led this team in tackles last year, is right there again this year, was a third-team All-American choice last year as a true freshman. This young man is a sophomore. He's one of the finalists for the Butkus Award as a sophomore, the only sophomore ever to be a finalist. And he deserves being in that group. This time out, charge to Florida State. 10-7, Seminoles lead in the ballgame ball game here at Doak Campbell Field in Tallahassee, Florida. Home of the Florida State Seminoles. Miami to the attack now. Second down and 10. The ball at the 40. They try the ground game again. This time with Larry Jones. And they'll get a couple of yards out of it. Up to about the 38. Defense has dominated this first half. Put it on the 39-yard line, not the 38. And call it third down and nine. Three wide outs, three DBs go with them.
penalty flag. The receiver, number 17, Coleman Bell, got tangled up with Kirk Carruthers. And that got a flag as the receiver went down with Carruthers. And you got, I think, a pass interference call against Florida State coming up. Holding on the defense. That's a holding instead. Kirk Carruthers is an inside linebacker. He wears 45, but he's not a DB. Inside linebacker who has the ability to cover tight ends and some, not the fastest backs out of the backfield, but some of them. He is from East Lansing, Michigan. Top 25 of the scores and highlights. Roger and Bro will be on at the Prudential Halftime Report, including a feature by Julia Moran about the bout. Bobby and Company, Mountain Inc. And I mean, football is truly their business. What the quarterbacks have done so far. The ball rests at the 29-yard line. It is a first down. Larry Jones is in the backfield for Miami. He's got it. Tucks it back into the middle. And there's a whole lot of folks bumping heads with him. Sterling Palmer, number 56, was the man that seemed to have the leverage on him and really stopped him. As the clock rolls along. Florida State, uh, Keith, will substitute uh, five and six defensive players. A lot of those guys along the defensive line are in there for the run situations, and then Bowden will put in four or five uh, different uh, players, some of them DBs and some of them defensive linemen, to rush the passer and to cover in the secondary. On second down and eight. You've got your five defensive backs in there. Jones came out. Ball hit the umpire. The pass struck the umpire. He's just, just part of the equipment. And it's third down and eight. Of course, he's got that lump on him. He doesn't feel like part of the equipment. There he is here, trying to get the, the, the ball to the receiver that's going to come out. Watches the official. This is just the quarterback's uh, fault as much as anything. You've got to see the DBs, but you also have got to see ahead of the receiver. I mean, you may have been blocked out by the offensive lineman. Could have hit him in the face, and that may be uh, part of the problem. Well, I don't know if you've ever tried to uh, catch. So hit him in the face, in the nose area, more than the eye. Thank goodness. Oh, that, that'll heal. Stephen McGuire checks back in. Third down and eight for the team. Beretta back. Pressure coming. Runs away from it. Gets his pass off. The pass is complete. Hard hit on Lamar Thomas seeing the ball for the first time today, but the ball flies out of bounds. And Miami has a first down deep in Florida State territory. He's going to release to the inside. Of the, we see the DB is going to jam him inside. That's Buckley. Now Buckley sees that Toretta is sprinting out to the outside. A very good throw by Toretta over Buckley. Thomas fumbles it, but it goes out of bounds. And it's first down Miami at the Florida State 13. Toretta throws it. Same man, Bell, that he's been looking at all day and uh, occasionally gives him the ball, and Coleman Bell is a dynamite receiver. Bell is number 17. It'll be a play-action fake. That's a slow block. He he's blocks the man for a while. Hopefully the man covering him will slide back to the inside. This time the Seminoles play it pretty well defensively. Time remaining in the first half is now 125. And Miami is knocking on the door, trying to regain the lead as we come to halftime. In the second quarter, Syracuse 10, Boston College 10. Miami is charged with this timeout. The influence of these two teams, and in particular the influence of the way Miami plays offensive football, you're beginning to see it all over the country. Points turned it over once. But the defenses and the quickness and the speed, just like we thought, 
was very uh, prevalent and controlling the game. Second down and six from the nine yard line as the crowd comes up a little bit here now trying to get involved in it. Back goes Toretta, looks for Williams, penalty flag as he pulls the ball down. He's taken down at about the nine, but let's see about the penalty. Umpire threw it. Usually that means a hold. Because he's the man looking at the line. We have holding on the offense. There it is right here. Now watch as the man tries to make a move this side. The center will block him initially. That's Harris, 54. He blocks him. Now watch him. Now it's the tackle. Take and the umpire is right there. <laughs> Take down. <laughs> that, that umpire, you know, if you're an offensive lineman, especially a guard or center, you've got to look at your guy. But I'd also look to see where the umpire was on the initial alignment. Second down and 16 as the ball comes back to the 23. Loretta's got some room, starts to run, knocked off his stride, and will pick up some, taken down at the 16. Toretta, and it'll bring up third down and long. Nobody getting open in the secondary. Of course, there's a lot of not, not a lot of room down here, Keith. The defensive backs can, can take more gambles, can be a little bit more aggressive, use the back of the end zone as, as uh, in, in their favor. And some good pressure put on Toretta. Miami spending the time out. They're now down to one at 51 seconds to go in the first half. It'll be third down and 13. Third and 13. From the 16. Let's. Right call, right time, right place. The loss is back outside uh, to the 24-yard line, and it was Todrick McIntosh. Here's the linebacker here, Carruthers. He's going to attract all of the attention, but the man that actually gets in there is the man next to him. Everybody jumps on Carruthers right there, and McIntosh comes free. Now two of them block the linebacker. Just a simple game between a linebacker and defensive end. Carlos Huerta. piece of it somebody gets in between the offensive linemen someone jumping they can't see maybe it was 74 I don't think it's the two guys that jump behind the line I think it's somebody right there in front 74 looks like Ostazuski. Yep, that'll be Henry and so now the Florida State Seminoles will run it on the ground, and that should put everybody in the clubhouse. As the time ticks away, and at halftime, it is Florida State leading Miami 10 to 7 in a defensive struggle. Back with the halftime after this message and the word from our ABC station. up a touchdown to Miami in the very first possession of the game came back to lead 10 to 7 this a key play at the close of the first half otherwise we'd be all even Miami was down there going for a touchdown and then had to settle for a field goal attempt and then the field goal attempt was blocked big momentum change for Florida State Sterling Palmer, we were told, number 56, is the man who leaped. He is 6'7", and standing behind the center, got in the air to get a finger on the ball. Florida State gets the ball now, the first possession of the second half. They won the toss and deferred. This would be a very good time to uh, assert themselves because, as you have said, 
consistently through the game. And as Bo said uh, a few minutes ago, offensive line play is so critical. And as you look at the halftime stats, I think you can tell right here that offensive line play hadn't been all that great. Well, it's a defensive board. There's no question about it. The turnovers are the thing that jumps out. The total yardage for these two offenses, 170 and 145 yards in the first half is not a whole lot. What's not shown on there is the four sacks that FSU has had on that man right there, Geno Toretta. And one of the keys going in was could the Miami offensive line, which is probably the weakest area of their team, could they hold up uh, against the rush of Florida State? The deep people for Florida State will be Tiger McMillan, 33, and Felix Harris, 24. Carlos Huerta will kick it off for Miami. So this one's still very much up in the air. Number one, Florida State. Number two, Miami. And here we go. All dropped by Harris. Now he gets out of there. Oh, my goodness. He had a little daylight to go, and you know who tripped him up? <laughs> Kevin Williams. How embarrassing for the uh, return man, too, after a nice effort. Jack Aruth. Bo Schembechler was right on the money as far as what the conversations in both locker rooms were going to be about. In the case of the University of Miami, that's all Dennis Erickson talked about. But in the Florida State locker room, Bobby Bowden addressed the team at the end and said, gentlemen, here's what we need to do. We need to run one yard longer if you're a runner, block a split second quicker if you're a blocker, and we need a big star in the second half. Well, they have the ball, and they have it out at the 28-yard line. Weldon back. Sack. Third sack in the ball game. It comes from Corwin Francis. Weldon has not yet stood up. He may have just gotten the wind knocked out of him because he did get hit right in the middle of the back. Here's Corwin Francis down here. As Weldon goes back, he's just going to come around the pile. Kind of a late, delayed blitz. He stands there for a second, drops back. I guess I circled the wrong guy, but he still gets to the inside. <laughs> I'm just checking, checking on all you guys out there, making sure you see which one I'm circling. Who's blitzing? <laughs> Right side of the screen, 58, Corwin Francis, backup linebacker. From the uh, way he was hit, it may well be that he just has had the wind knocked out of him. Brad Johnson will hustle into the game, the big guy at 6'6", 215. Doesn't look as though anything with, with his uh, lower legs, his knees or ankles are a problem. No. Johnson started uh, when uh, Weldon was hurt in the LSU game. The next game, uh, Johnson was the starter. Of course, he was the starter and lost the job to Casey Weldon. He's 6'6", 215. He is a senior. He is from Black Mountain, North Carolina. He has a powerful arm. But he's been sitting on the bench all day. And he didn't take that many uh, snaps during the week in the preparation for this ball game. And they are still talking to and looking at Casey Weldon, the quarterback for Florida State. Now we get some movement. I don't know if you ever had the wind knocked out of you, but it is no fun. And hopefully that's what it is. Uh, second man in from the bottom right. 58 just comes around the pile. Hits him in the middle of the back. He may have fallen on the football, Keith. Sometimes when you go down, he may fall on the football, and that is that can take the wind out of you very quickly. It looks like that's all it is. But he's got to come out for one play. That gets a roar from the home folks. And the ball is resting now uh, near the 23 yard line. It'll be second down and 16. And Johnson is in. Here comes the blitz. 
Madaris coming around from the back. Johnson puts it in the air on the one play he's got. Gives it to Ant Lee. And Ant Lee runs that football across the 40-yard line to the 42, and it's a first down for Florida State. So Johnson comes into the ball game, and he comes in with a pass play. Here's Jack. Well, Keith, it's good news for the condition of Casey Weldon. He just had the wind knocked out of him, as Bob Greasy said. But what they've told me is they won't let him back in right away unless he can convince them that he's ready to play. Johnson stays. The ball marked at the 41-yard line and first down. Going to put it up again. No, he isn't either. Everybody peeled off and left that great big gaping hole, and he runs it close to a first down. The advantage of, 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 of Brad Johnson coming into the ball game. First of all, look at this graphic. They are a big third quarter team outscoring their opponents big time. But Johnson has been, there's no pressure on him all week. No pressure on him in the ball game. He's sitting over on the sideline the first half. He knows what the uh, Hurricanes have done. There's no pressure on him. He comes in here, he says, well, you know, I've been a starter here before. I can make plays, give me a chance. He picked up nine yards on that run, second down and one, and they go to Lee, and he will get the first down at the Miami 46. First drive of the third quarter, very big for both sides. Weldon coming back in. Johnson certainly did his job and gets plaudits from his teammates on the side of the field as Casey steps back into the huddle. Johnson gave him a first down to work with. Weldon, 7 of 12 for 109 yards and an interception. Can't get rid of it. Darren Klein, the sophomore from Aurora, Colorado, had walked off earlier in the ball game, uh, beat up. But he comes back and registers sack number four on Weldon. Casey Weldon is content to sit in the pocket a little bit longer than Brad Johnson. Johnson, as you saw uh, just a play earlier, took off and got a few yards upfield. That's one of the reasons that Casey gets hammered too much, though. He holds the ball so long. Yep. Well, you make big plays that way, but you'll also get some sacks. Ball comes all the way back to the Florida State 48. Second down and 16. He runs it back to the 40. Six, which is just about where this possession series uh, or this first down series started. Now he's going to be looking at third and ten. Really haven't seen a lot of gimmicks yet. Semi stuff, but nothing really out. Just the one quarterback, uh, same play both times. Quarterback rolls to the right, throws back to the left. Seminoles are 0 for 6 in third down drives, third down conversion. Weldon rolls it out. Passes away, pass is good. And so they convert for the first time today at the 32 yard line. Kevin Knox makes the catch. Good play, move the pocket. Both backs go with you. Gives you a little bit more time for the receivers to do their thing. Knox gets wide open, comes back to the quarterback. Big first down. Remember that graphic you saw a few minutes ago. Florida State has been a heavyweight in the third quarter. Against everybody they played. Another quick pop. Whoa, he drilled it. And it's caught by McCorby. And it's a first down in front of Daryl Williams at the 20. Quick slant. Wide receiver's going to come down, break to the inside. Now the man to make the play is right here. But Weldon, three-step drop, sees the receiver on a little slant route. He's catching the tough balls right there. Whoa. Play is there a lot, but you need a special receiver that will go in there and catch it. Kez McCorvey, remarkable family. Weldon back, gets his pass away, pass is completed. 
And it'll go for another first down for Florida State. It looked like McCorby again, and it was. There's a reverse angle of it. This play is made by Weldon. Now he should throw. Now it's uh, all bets are off. He gets rid of the ball, avoids the sack. They want in big games. The big time players come forward and make big plays. First and goal, Florida State near the eight yard line of Miami. Amp Lee slides down. He was going to make the cut toward the boundary, and his feet left him. And there's a loss of two. This is prescription turf. Lee has only 29 yards today in 11 carries. He's got a remarkable record uh, over the last few years. 419 attempts coming into the ball game without a turnover. You hand it to that man, you can be sure that you're going to run it again. Here's what Florida State has done inside the 20 today. Lee again got a block on the corner. Penalty flag is down. Darren Smith wrestles him out of bounds. Let's see about the call. Referee, I think, threw that flag. Offensive holding. Ten-yard penalty. Florida State continues to shoot itself in the foot. Tell you, it's tough enough moving down the field against a good defense. And then you, you start adding holding penalties, clipping penalties. It just makes it that much tougher. Ball comes back to the 22-yard line. Right side of the screen, 85 Johnson right there, left hand. Yep, there again. It'll make it second down and 22. Edgar Bennett. Bennett knocked out by Williams. That ball was snapped and they almost had a hurricane in the neutral zone, but he got back. And Bennett's marked out inside the 15 near the 14 yard line. So they'll be looking now at third down and 14. Eleven plays, six and a half minutes so far in the opening possession of the second half. The Florida State leading Miami ten to seven. Weldon's pass to the corner. No, he had it on the hands of number one Shannon Baker. And he couldn't hold it with Ryan McNeil defending. And it's fourth down. Take a look at the protection this time for Weldon. Good coverage. Look at this throw. Right where it needs to be. As you do all that, you get the protection, you get the offensive line, you get the quarterback, the ball there. The receiver has to make the catch. 25-yard field goal good earlier by Jerry Thomas. Now it's a 31-yard try. And good. 13-7. Florida State now leads by six. 8-29 to play. Third quarter. In a sense by Miami. Settling for a 31-yard field goal by Jerry Thomas. So lead 13-7. Now we'll see the Hurricanes with the football for the first time in the second half and see what Dennis Erickson and his folks have put together. They still do not want to kick the football to Kevin Williams. Fair catch is called at the 28-yard line by Casey Greer. And that's where Miami will go to work. These are the games that follow. Notre Dame will be Happy Valley. Against Penn State, Michigan will be at Illinois, Oregon, UCLA, and Pasadena. All of those teams, uh, with the exception of Oregon, looking at bowl possibilities. 
probably have already got their deals made if you were to believe what you hear and read. 28 yard line. McGuire. That'll be the 32 four yard pickup. There has been a goodly bit of real estate open in right in that area where McGuire ran all day today as everybody has been so intent in shutting down those wide people. You get three or four yards up there but then those linebackers and the quickness gets there and they just shut it down for a four yard game. Jones tries it and he only gets uh, a yard as we go to run. Thanks Keith Indiana at Ohio State third quarter. And for the second time today, Carlos Snow will bust one up the middle. This time, 13 yards for the touchdown. Buckeyes lead at 17-13. Snow's eighth rushing touchdown of the season. Let's go back to Keith. Kind of nice to see Carlos Snow bouncing back. It really is, is, isn't it? Here, isn't it? Yep. Third down, call it five. is complete to Coleman Bell and Bell's got a first down at midfield and just across it for Miami. Well, he has sort of been the money man today when they've had to have something they've been they've gone looking for number 17. Right here is uh, Williams. He started in motion out here into the uh, into the flat. They they forgot about Corwin Bell. He's just going to slide right into the middle of the field. They're paying too much attention to Williams number five. He went in motion. Nobody covered the tight end. Good play by Toretta. McGuire's back in. Has the ball. Good block on the corner. Move it from near midfield down across the 45 to the 44. So it's about a six yard pickup with Kurt Carruthers making the back. We're still in the third quarter. At 6.45 to go, McGuire on the day, 12 carries and 69 yards. It's closer to five, so let's call it second down and five. Go Spencer on a reverse. What some of us old timers used to call the wing back counter. Bob Greasy used to run that. <laughs> Me. <laughs> just too much quickness for Florida State. They just uh, they see it, recognize it, and run to the uh, run to the point of uh, intersection and get him. The third down and two coming up. It's Seminoles defensive leaders. Three, three turnovers, three turnovers, and four sacks in the first half. This is McGuire for the first down. He didn't get there. He is just a little short. They'll undoubtedly want the chains on for this one. They will in a hurry. So that'll stop your clock at 5.56 to play in the third quarter. And the chains come on. Well, I haven't seen anything that would tell me that uh, there anything has changed here except possibly both teams are striving for a greater concentration, maybe. Well, so far, anyway. It's short. It's short. It's short. It's short. Well, it looks like they're going to go for it, uh, Keith. Uh, Dennis Erickson uh, falls on the 40-yard line. Florida State is number three in the nation against the run. Miami is uh, way down in rushing statistics. They're not known for the rushing. They need about a foot. McGuire has it. When you can take him two steps outside and then let him turn, and he is a load that he has the first down. The black and white blimp 
with the killer whale colors, Shamu. Carrying our picture from the sky today, Airship Shamu representing SeaWorld Parks in Orlando, Oro, San Diego, and San Antonio. Drifting through the blue sky of the Panhandle of Florida. Larry Jones in the backfield, first down from the 38-yard line. Loretta turns and throws it. My goodness, they're lucky to get it back. Number 89, Howard Dinkins. They've sort of been picking on Dinkins all day, and that time he almost put six on the board for Florida State. Told you going on, they are a big play defense. They give up some big plays, but they make some big plays also. Geno should never have thrown this ball. Dinkins, that ball is almost a lateral, thrown backwards. It looks like a lateral. Almost thrown backwards. Yeah, could have been. It went out of bounds. Kevin Williams lines up in the backfield. It'll be no back after he goes in motion. Here they come. Oh, they missed him. But they flush him. And they get him at the 35. Woo. I mean, they had him in their sights, and he just took a little step, and uh, everybody went right by him. But they did flush him. No backs. Florida State is blitzing no backs. Gino does a nice job of avoiding three defensive guys. No way you're going to outrun these guys, Gino. Too fast. Too quick for you. But nobody was open downfield. Bump and run, man to man coverage. Third down and seven at the 35 of Florida State. Goes inside to McGuire. One yard pickup. Marvin Jones hit him just as the ball arrived. It is fourth and six. The other linebacker, Kirk Carruthers, was blitzing him right in the face as you see Carlos Huerta in for a field goal attempt. The ball will be put down. Just beyond the 41, make it a 51-yard try. He had one try tip today. His long of the season is 47 yards. This is a 51-yarder. I heard whistles before the kick. Florida State call timeout. That's what he's saying. Time remaining in the third quarter, 3.49. That kick by Huerta was short and right of his target. But FSU had called time, apparently. He holds every kicking record at Miami, except the longest field goal by Dan Miller. From behind the FR, I mean the uh, Paul, behind the kicker. Paul Snyder has come in. Yeah, we're going to change it and go punt. See there, the umpire right there calls timeout. They changed from kicking the field goal to uh, lining up to attempt the punt. Well, these these guys out there, I wouldn't be surprised somebody drop kicked it. You never know. Drop kicked it. <laughs> well, these guys will do a lot of different things both of them well, Florida State has nobody back. nobody back huh? all he's got to do is pooch it and they're going to kill it way back there and he's done a pretty good job of pooching it yeah it's going to roll around inside the 10 and roll dead at the 7 so that worked out pretty good for uh, the Miami Hurricane. Woo! Florida State is leading Miami 13 to 7. They have the football first down at their own seven yard line. And Kevin Mancini is back in at offensive tackle. Casey Weldon in the ball game, 10 for 16, 147 yards, intercepted once. Weldon's pass, good. 
Pass is caught by Kez McCorby. And it appears to be a first down to give the Seminoles a little real estate behind them. Nebraska trying to make it back down to the Orange Bowl. One of these two teams are going to be in that Orange Bowl game, it looks like. Weldon gives the ball to Bennett. Edgar Bennett breaks it on the sideline. Got a bound at the 38-yard line. Curly Brown got just enough of him. Another first down. Watch the block on number one. Top left of your screen. That's Amp Lee blocks uh, or, or Jesse Armstead. And then Mancini gets a good block. Poor tackling uh, on that side by James. Just a good job of blocking and some poor tackling and a big play for the Seminoles. So from the seven, they picked up successive first downs, and now they got some room. Here they come. Ampley blows it up the middle. I mean, you go looking for Amp, and you just keep grabbing air. Darrell Williams finally got the shoulder on him and knocks him out of bounds. But another big play, first down, Florida State, Miami, 35-yard line. Well, the offensive line of Florida State is starting to take over the ball game. Both these linebackers are going to blitz. Watch the offensive line as they pick up the blitz. Nice block by the fullback, Bennett. And then some, just some good run and Amp Lee does not allow the first man to tackle him. Bennett with two good blocks, two plays. Bennett picked up 20 on the previous play. Lee just went for 27. And he's got it again. And he's inside the 30 and down to the 27-yard line. That's an eight-yard pickup. Give him seven yards to the 28. Darren Smith to tackle. Hurricanes are blitzing again. Left of your screen, top left. That's Barrow, 56. Watch the fullback. Makes him go around. Doesn't get a crushing block, but forced him to go around. Enough room for Lee. It's the thing about these backs, Keith. They'll block for each other. Lee uh, running the ball. Bennett running the ball. John Jackson has come in now to give Amp Lee a little breather. Oh. Weldon pumps it, keeps it, takes off. Little quarterback draw going for the first down at the 24-yard line of Miami. The Honda Scholar athlete this week. You see his grade point in management information systems, Reggie Dixon, Florida State University senior offensive guard. He is from Jacksonville. Honda will present a check of $3,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Florida State University. Michael Barrow is the man shaken up on the field, number 56, a very important personality in the structure of that Miami defensive core. Well, that looks pretty good. I expect we'll see him again. Looks like he gets one of his feet caught tries to dance around jump around the block right there Maybe his left foot gets caught underneath the, the leg of uh, Edgar Bennett hurricanes looking a little bit disorganized uh, on these last couple of plays Keith that time one of the quarterbacks barely getting out to the alignment over the wide receiver from the 24 now on the Miami end of the field first down Florida State Weldon gives it to Jackson not a whole lot there for that one. He was a little late getting started, and by then uh, Eric Miller had him in sight and got him. Well, we thought that Florida State would try to run inside, and that's what they've done on this drive, especially at, at the at the Hurricanes. 13 to 7, Florida State leading at 1:40 to go in the third quarter. Pace of the game. Quite deliberate. The defense is dominated. Weldon's pass is good. 
Edgar Bennett, number 22, gets down to the 10-yard line. He's got a first down. I don't know which side of the 10 they're going to mark it. But Edgar Bennett comes up with another big play. Georgia Tech said to be headed for possibly the Aloha Bowl. Winning their game. They have to win uh, one more because one of their uh, victories coming in here was against Furman. Furman is the one double-A team. Jackson is out. Ampley is back. The ball is squarely on the 10. And it's first and goal. Lee looking around. By then, school's out. Jesse Armstead's in the neighborhood. You get one glance, that's it. Yep. That's right. The Miami linebackers have been banged up a little bit. Armstead popped the shoulder a little bit earlier. Jesse Barrow, I mean, uh, Michael Barrow, we just heard, uh, twisted his left ankle and has been cleared to come back into the ball game. And we're headed toward a half a minute to go in the third quarter. Eric Terrell, number seven now. You're going to see him at the top of your picture. Weldon looked at him, came back into the middle to his tight end, Lonnie Johnson, and hit him on the numbers at the five-yard line. So that'll probably be the last play of the third quarter. And it is, for sure. Now they whistle it. And stop the clock with three seconds to play. Weldon now shows 13 of 19 in his personal stats for 176 yards. In this quarter, you see that has happened. We have time for one play. In this possession by Florida State, which started back at their seven-yard line, they've run nine plays, covered 89 yards, used three and a half minutes. They have yet to put some numbers up. and let it run out before they run the play. And so we have finished three with Florida State leading by six. And we'll be back after this message and the word from our ABC station. Johnson uh, trotted off the field, went back in actually, and they finally had to run him off because you have to sit out one play. They've got Hart in there right now, big Warren Hart. Florida State is looking at third down and four from the Miami four for the touchdown if they're going to get one. Otherwise, uh, we might very well see another kick. But this has been a very long possession, a long drive by Florida State. Let's go run here if they've cooked up. Yep, Edgar Bennett bounces, headed for the corner, won't get there. Taken down and out of bounds by number 31, Darrell Williams at the three. Yeah, Bowden didn't want to take any chance to, to turn the ball over. Uh, wants to get the three points at least out of this situation. Third quarter dominated by Florida State. Total yards 159 to 38. They ran 22 plays to Miami's 10. If he gets his three here, that gives him a nine-point lead. Yeah. Then I think his offensive thinking conceivably could change. I don't know if it will or not, but it's possible. Here's the kick up. Nailed it. So Jerry Thomas becomes a major persona in this game with his third field goal. And we'll zip up the coast to New York City and Rogers. There's some weather out there, aren't you? Well, it would be a lot nicer at Miami at the Orange Bowl if they, if they make it. Oh. That thing they played uh, against the uh, Col uh, Nebraska-Colorado game there, that was just frigid. Oh. Oh. It is a 16 to 7 ball game now with 14 minutes and 22 seconds. The home team Florida State ranked number one all season long. Holding the lead. Now we're going to see Miami play some games here. You've got Kevin Williams number five. Daryl Spencer 35 and they both come creeping up. Williams is going to get this one. He's got it at the 17. And they take him down at the 29. Derek Brooks, number 10, hit him solid and wrapped him and took him down.
You look at Florida State scoring drive as Miami starts its possession here and I should point out that Miami has been inside the Florida State 35 the last four times they've had the ball. They've been intercepted, intercepted, missed the field goal and punted. Yep. Stephen McGuire lines up in the backfield. Gino Toretta. Short underneath the linebackers, McGuire. And he's down at the 36. And that'll be a seven yard pickup as LeVon Brown, the strong safety, makes the tackle. The Hurricanes team only had the ball one time the entire third quarter. Florida State dominating that third quarter with two drives, one of a 13 plays and one of 11 plays, both ending in field goals. So Florida State coming out the second half, picks up six points on Miami. Miami's got a little bit of a hitch in their giddy up now. They need to get some moving on. Beretta, 10 out of 20. McGuire runs it and gets his first down. Mark him just over the 40. Record crowd today at Oak Campbell Stadium. Watching this 35th meeting between these two schools. 63,442. That passes the old mark of 63-190 set last year when the Florida Gators were here. The right back for the sidelines to Kevin Williams for the 45. Chris Cowart makes the tackle. And uh, the clock stops as he goes out of bounds, and we check in with Jack. Did you know the last time we were here, the kicking game for Florida State? Well, it was really a problem. It's changed, but look at one of the new things they've unveiled today. This is a special kicking net. Now, these are the goal posts. What you do is you bring the ball back here, and you've got the right angle to get it through the uprights. Everything's good except the kid, uh, the kicker misses uh, two or three times. You won't have a whole lot of confidence. And this is a big blow up the middle by McGuire. He had a big hole and then just started running through people. And they don't stop him until he's all the way down to the Florida State 28 yard line. Wow. Well, Miami's passing game gets all the glitter. It's explosive. But it's the running game that beat Florida State last year. 334 yards on the ground last year. And Miami's doing some business on the ground again here this afternoon. McGuire has 16 carries for 103 yards. And Larry Jones is in. First down for the Canes. And Toretto to put it up. Throws it underneath. Goes to Lamar Thomas. Thomas is down around the 21. Miami showing a little more grit, a little more determination in this possession than they did in the previous one. Come on. Second down and three. McGuire's back now, having had a little blow on the sidelines. He's wing back. Blitz coming. McGuire popped the tackle at the line of scrimmage. And Leon Fowler finally wrestles him down, but he's got another first down. Kirk Carruthers had a shot at him right on the line of scrimmage, and he ran right through it. So McGuire really pounding hard. Ball resting just short of the 13. First down for the Canes. Here they come. Checked off, yep. Penalty. They take him down back at the 22, but the whistles were blowing and the flag had been thrown before the ball was snapped. Yeah. Everybody knew that their blitz was on. We have a dead ball foul. Ball's thrown on the offense. Back him up five. knew the blitz was on this is the man that was blitzing but over here this was a man that jumped a little bit early for the Hurricanes he's already up in his stance Gino had saw it checked off you got to keep your poise in those situations if you know what's coming and you get to the right play you can take advantage of it. the penalty puts them back on the Florida State 19 where it's first down and 15.
Carruthers creeping around suddenly winds up eyeballing Toretta and Gino calls a timeout. Says, mm, I think I need a little help from the planning. Big plays rushing for more yardage than it's passing. You got to give the credit to the defense of Florida State for taking away the big plays of Miami. All right, first down and 15 for Miami. In the fourth quarter. Nine point lead, Florida State. Toretta's passes away across the field and out of bounds. Incomplete. He was looking at Horace Copeland. That'll make it second down and 15. Toretta now 12 of 23, 115 yards, two interceptions you see there compared to what Casey Weldon has done. And four quarterback sacks. He has not had the luxury of sitting back there and uh, looking around for very long. That play, another blitz was on. He had to get rid of it. Didn't have time to wait. Second down, 15. Five sacks. And the ball comes back across the 25. Here's Carruthers out here. The linebacker is going to slide to the inside, kind of sneak in here. Gino's going to go back, look downfield. The back, number 30, McGuire sees him, just does a poor job of blocking him. That's at least the second sack today for Carruthers. Third down and 22. Ball out just over the 25. Another timeout. Charge to Miami. 10 26 to play in the ball game. They have one left. Timeout remaining for Miami now. Tuck that away in your mind at 10 26 to go in the ball game. Third down and 22 at the Florida State 25. And the reason he called the timeout, he didn't have much time left on the 25 second clock. Yeah, does he throw it into the end zone here? You got to get at least three points on this drive. They got it back at the 27. Six sacks. Simpson did it this time. They're just blitzing him, Keith. The inside linebacker is here. The cornerback is here. They're both going to be coming along with all the other defensive guys. Jones picks him up. That time, Toretta steps around. They need three points. Werder from 45 yards out. Plenty of leg, and he got it. Carlos Huerta. 9.48 to play now. And it's a six-point game. 16 to 10, Florida State. The problem with the knee, I'm sorry to say. Sophomore linebacker. Florida State had 16 unanswered points after Miami had scored on the opening possession of the game. Now the Hurricanes have finally put three points up to make it 16 to 10. They will kick off now to Florida State. Where to hit some knuckleball skittering downfield. It's bouncing around, goes into the end zone, and they will put it down there. And it will come out to the 20 yard line. The world's top male tennis superstars have been in Frankfurt, Germany this past week for the ATP Tour World Championship. Tomorrow, Pete Sampras will face Jim Courier in the final match of the game's premier event. Coverage begins 3 Eastern, 2 Central, and Pacific on ABC Sports. Told Keith that Patterson has a sprained knee, will not be back in the ballgame. Right, of time now, let me give you that. 9.48 to play. There's young Tom Patterson. Florida State owns the football, first down at the 20. The pace of the game is just grinding. It's, it's one of those games that everybody will be sore two weeks 
after this one. Amp Lee bouncing outside goes from nothing to almost six yards before Darren Smith brings him down. What has happened in the second half that the running games have taken over the football game. The defense has dominated the first half both both ways. The second half, nobody's throwing the ball. Everybody's starting to run the football, and we've only had four possessions. Florida State had two possessions, both of over 10 plays. Miami has had two possessions, both for 10 plays, and mainly on the ground. Stephen McGuire for Miami and Ant Lee for uh, Florida State, the big offensive team. This is Lee again. First down if they give him where the ball went down, and it looks like they're going to. Lee with uh, adding that four yards to it would have 73 yards uh, on the ground and 48 yards. Uh, so it was a 51 yard record. Florida State seems to own the second half. It's amazing that Mancini is back in there. He has not played in any of the games the last three or four weeks. Supposedly a torn uh, ligament in his knee. Put the brace on and start practicing this week, and he's in there. Clock running at 8.40. Weldon gives it off to the first man, Edgar Bennett. Two yards on the carry, second down and eight coming up. So Bobby Bowden and his people trying to take control of the clock. That puts Miami in a position where they may have to gamble. And if they do have to gamble, as 91, uh, Darren Kine goes out and sprained uh, ankle for the second time today. When you start having to gamble and, uh, and blitz and double up, then that exposes something somewhere, some spot to a clever guy like a welder. Kine, back on the sideline. He hurt that ankle back in the second quarter. Here's Weldon throwing the ball. That's a lateral. 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 on that side is waving it off as an incomplete play. Well, he was pass. blowing his whistle. That means since he has blown his whistle, the play is dead, but that was a lateral pass. It was thrown behind the receiver. Now watch it. The ball is tipped. Deflected. Okay. All right, all bets are off. Didn't see it. Good call by the line. line. But once he's blown that whistle, it's dead anyway. That's true. So put the ball on the 32, make it third down and eight. Is this where you, you run your uh, ace in the hole? Is this where you throw your gimmick? You try to pick up a first down, whatever your best play is. I don't think you're going to pull any gimmicks out of this situation. Kind of threw that one into a crowd. Shannon Baker was kind of out in front, but there was plenty of coverage. Keith, in the second half, as you look at the pass protection that Weldon uh, enjoys here, the simple fact of the matter is that the defensive backs are better than the wide receivers in the second half. They're knocking the ball loose. They're covering man to man. They, they're not getting open. Williams is back. Player just gets some heat. And he just barely got it out. They went after him, and uh, the ball is. He can run. He can run it. He batted it right to him. Now, the beanbag was thrown back there at the 40, and uh, Kevin Williams winds up with uh, about two more yards than that out to the 42. So now here's the Miami Hurricane. They trail by six points. They own the football at their own 42-yard line. They've got seven minutes and 20 seconds to play in this ball game. And they are a homer-hitting club. They have plenty of time left on this drive. They've got over seven minutes. If they don't do anything on this drive, when they get it back the next time, they only have one time outlet. Right. These guys love to go vertical. Question is, is when they have tried to do that today, there's been uh, a whole lot of folks wearing garnet. The whole concept here, as we look at this discussion, which I don't know what it's about, is that Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator for Florida State, 
has blitzed Toretta and the, the Miami offensive line. Would you please put 15 seconds back on the clock? That's what it was about. 15. And what they're doing in blitzing him, they're not giving him time to throw the football. That's why you haven't heard from Thomas and Copeland. That's exactly right. That's what the AP top 10 is doing so far today. And some later. Washington Huskies kind of got an eye cocked on this game, I would think, since they're third ranked in the country. They were involved in a defensive struggle themselves last week at uh, Los Angeles. I would think that the Huskies are pulling for Florida State, and then in two weeks, when the Seminoles go to uh, Gainesville, they'd be pulling for the Gators. First down and 10 at the 42-yard line. Here comes what one would sense to be a very important possession in this ballgame. The Red is straight back. Heats on. Carruthers, first man to hit him. Seven sacks. Here's Roger. Well, Keith, update you on that Kansas-Colorado game in the snow at Boulder. After the Jayhawks scored, Colorado came right back. The halfback option, Lamont Warren to Charles Johnson downfield. 48 yards on a touchdown pass. And the Buffaloes tied up at 10 in the snow out in Colorado. Well, those guys, you think, all have frostbite. But I guess, I guess when you're young. Ball is back near the 37. Loretta looking around, looking around, lobs it downfield for Bell. That's a good catch. Beautifully touched pass. Great catch, huh? Oh. Coverage was there. Toretta finally threw this one away instead of taking the sack. He just threw it up high. Bell is 17. It's a slow block. Fuller, McCarvey, 26. He doesn't see the ball. And then Bell uses his height to go up and catch it. That's a big boost, a big play for the confidence of Gino Toretta. First down for the Hurricanes at the Seminole 41. 6-10 to play in the game. McGuire. They put him out at the 33. Leon Fowler put a shoulder into it. McGuire has had a big game. Once again, Miami is down, knocking on the door. McGuire totaling 119 yards in the ball game. Well, the Seminole defense is not giving Gino Toretta time to throw the ball, but on the ground, the Hurricanes are getting something done. Look at McGuire. Second down, long two. Got it. Runs right over a man. Takes it all the way down to the 15-yard line. I mean, he just flat ran over Leon Fowler. Take a look at the offensive line now. It's just a stretch. Everybody stays on the man in front of him. That creates a gap. Searcy, 73, got a cut block on the defensive end, which created a little crease. McGuire all the crease cut back and a big play all right they put the ball down at the 16. first down miami let's come Toretta gets it off it is incomplete it was intended for lamar thomas he would have had that ball down where thomas could have caught it buckley would have intercepted it Terrell was right there. This is the sixth great time that uh, Miami has been able to get inside the 35-yard line of Florida State. But so far, in those six possessions, only three points. Their touchdown came in the very first possession of the ball game. Number 55, Marvin Jones. I thought he stopped rather abruptly the way he's been running over people. <laughs> That's why uh -huh. it's Mr. Jones. They had been blocking uh, 
Marvin Jones pretty well in the second half. He got three. It's third down. Bowden has taken away the big play offense of Miami and forced him to run the football. This is a very long six, close to seven yards. Loretta's pass. Kevin Williams fell down. Richard Toes was sort of looking around to see if there was a yellow flag coming. The it's coverage. Toes or Knight? It's, it's Knight, 13. Knight, yeah. Yeah. The coverage is there. The route isn't that good. He rounds it off. You can't throw a ball out there. Knight may cut in front of it. Canes are going for it on fourth down. Sixteen to ten ball game. And on fourth down, the Canes are going for the bundle. Beretta back quick. Let's it go. Pass is complete. Pass is caught. Pass is good for a first down and goal to go at the three-yard line to Horace Copeland. That's his first catch of the day. Top of the screen, Copeland on Buckley. Is that a big catch or what? First catch of the day. Buckley tries to pull him back. No blitz this time. Quick passing. Plenty of time to throw it. So on first and goal, here's McGuire back in the ball game. He has it. Maybe a yard from the three to the two. And it'll bring up second down and goal of the time so precious now at four minutes. Florida State took the lead in the second quarter. Built it to 16 to 7. Miami cut it to 16 to 10. And now they're threatening to regain the lead. McGuire. A half a yard. Nothing fancy here. Just plain old jawbone football. It's interesting that these two teams came into the ball game, both big time offensive uh, powerhouses. And it's gotten down to a defensive struggle where both teams are running the football. It is third down. They're at least a yard and a half, close to two yards away from the goal line with Jones in the backfield. Larry Jones. He has it. He got a touchdown. Miami has scored. kick by Huerta is good. Tom Patterson was the snapper. He went out. He saw with a strained knee. Medeiros does this backup snapping. They, it wasn't terribly clean, but it was well handled by uh, the holder and to put in the air by Huerta good. And Miami leads 17 to 16. It's been a long day. A lot of guys uh, fighting, scratching. It all comes down to who wants it the most. It's not the, the white paint, it's the yellow line for the touchdown. Well, McGuire does most of the heavy head knocking. And what got down to cases, uh, they needed the fresh legs of Jones, and he stuck it in the end zone. You got three minutes and one second to play in the game now. Well, Take a look at the left side of the offensive line. 72 is Cristobal. 17 is Cole Bell. I mean, Coleman Bell. Just enough to get him in. 
All right, Miami with a one-point lead will kick it off now, leading 17 to 16. Those are the games that are coming up. This one is running long. We've got three minutes to play as number one Florida State now trails number two Miami by a point. Tiger McMillan and Terrell Buckley are back for Florida State. Winter will kick it off. Turn of this one. Way back into the end zone, and Florida State will go to work. First down at the 20. As you take a look at the scoring drive of Miami, another 11 play drive. That three drives in the second half, all over 10 plays. But Keith, it gets down to this three minutes to play. Number one against number two. Number one is behind. You've got Casey Weldon, probably the best quarterback in the country, who is in, in contention for a big trophy, the Heisman Trophy, best player. It'll be interesting to see what happens. All they need is three. Their history and place kicking has not been pronounced. Weldon coming to the ball, 13 of 21 for 176 yards. His pass is away to the sideline, and it's close to a first down. Depends on where they put him out. Pass is complete to Tim McCorvey. Here's a look at what Miami has done in the second half with the football. They had the possession, eight possessions in the first half. Never had it more than 10 plays in any position. In fact, didn't have it any 10 plays. Second half, all three possessions, at least 10 plays. McCorby has become the big play man for them now. He made that catch for nine yards. It's second down and one. Pick up the first down up at the 33. And they'll move the team and stop the clock at 249. In timeouts, Florida State has two. Casey Weldon looking to the sideline. They wind the clock on him. Now he's got to get his team up to the line in a hurry and get it going. 240 to play in the game. Weldon's pass again to the sideline. It is caught at the 44-yard line by Eric Terrell. Almost slipped away. There just wasn't room for him to make the turn. One of the favorite plays of FSU. High formation, tight end down the middle, and the wide receiver runs and out. But Neal, 47, had some ideas about going for the interception. First down at the 44 for Florida State. Weldon now, 15 of 23, 196 yards. They got him back at the 40. Nobody available. That's five sacks by the Miami defenders today. We just showed you on the last replay how McNeil, the left corner, was trying for the interception. That time, the receiver was running it out and up, trying for the home run. Loss of three yards on the play. Time now becomes the crucial factor here. That and Florida State's desire to move the ball. But you have two minutes and 18 seconds to play. Weldon on that sack lost three yards. They're looking at second down and 13 from their own 41. That's Edgar Bennett. And Bennett moves it up to the 47. Looked like he might be able to pop outside, but Jesse Armstead uh, penetrated some of the blocking. None of those games have started yet. They've just started, Keith, and there's no score in any of them. Yep. But the critical thing here, it's a four-down area for Florida State. They need to pick up, what, seven yards in the next two plays. They'll go for it on fourth down, obviously, if they don't make it here. Now we go inside two minutes. And it's third down and seven. Number one is trailing. Bennett reaching for it 
to the 46-yard line of Miami. Ryan McNeil trying to hold him. It's close. Well, he went out of bounds, but I couldn't see from the uh, players over here on the near sideline. Big effort. Precious time is ticking away here. Going to be fourth down in about half a yard. Play very, very, very slow coming in from the sidelines, and it's going to force Florida State to spend their last time out. They wasted 30 seconds and then finally called timeout. You got a minute 15 to play in the game. By the Seminoles. They have no timeouts remaining. Bobby Bowden has got a timeout here, Keith. A lot of time for him to think. He's known for doing some things at different times that uh, may surprise you. He may put on a play. It's fourth and one. He may put on a play, a big play, a, a, a short yardage, run it into the line, fake it, and try to throw something deep. He may allow Casey Weldon to come up to the line of scrimmage and see if that play is good. If it's good, they may run it. If it's not good and Miami's playing deep, he'll say, all right, we're going to run this other play. We'll check to it and just pick up the first down. You better be right. Or there won't be a second chance. Well, he's a, he's been a free wheeler for a long time. It looks like Miami is lining up deep. Uh, deep. They'll probably run something to pick it up. They only need about a half a yard. They give it to Bennett. Bennett bounces off the pile. He's still going and is finally thrown down around the 40-yard line. So that'll be a first down for the Seminoles. Clock stops when the chains are moved. That used five seconds. Jerry Thomas has now started to warm up. Dan Mowry has been warming up for uh, Florida State. And the man hurt is Rusty Medeiros for Miami. Medeiros, who has been a very prominent figure today in the defensive effort by the Miami Hurricanes. That's Maori 9. Thomas is 15. Maori was the field goal kicker earlier in the year. Missed a whole bunch of extra points and some field goals. Back to Bowden says, I don't know what we'll do because that was the weakest area of our team if we get when if and when we get into a close ball game. Well, they're in one now and Maori kicks the long ones and Thomas the shorter ones. With as much pressure as you have in this ball game, but right now you need a steel stomach to go out there. And Weston Medeiros from uh, the Ozarks is going to have to leave. And he looked like they might have been working on his hip. I couldn't tell, but he's obviously in no condition to stay in the ball game. A big loss for the Hurricanes. Uh, he is their best defensive lineman. The placement of the ball is just short of the 40. The time remaining is a minute 10. Florida State does not have a timeout remaining. Officially, this will be the 40 because it's in between the hash mark and the yard strike. Terrell, McCorvey, and Baker, the wideout. People. Weldon back a lot of time. Gets it away to the side. The pass is caught over there by Edgar Bennett, and Bennett goes out of bounds at the 33, close to the 32-yard line, looking back into a bright sun to make that catch. Weldon was looking downfield. Bennett was his outlet. Nothing down there, so he just threw it out, and Bennett did get out of bounds. It's a dangerous pass. You got to make sure there's no DBs in between you. We got the law over there. We got we got officials over there. We got coaches. They put it on the 33, where it is second down and three. A minute four. Pass down the middle is incomplete. Intended for Lonnie Johnson, the tight end. I thought for a minute you were going to have a hitch and go out here in this far corner with number seven, Terrell, because he ran the hitch and then didn't go. 
And uh, in hindsight, when he looks at the game film, he'll wish he had it. Because <laughs> it opened up for him. One minute. Thomas and Maori are the place kickers. Number one trails, number two by a point. Weldon's pass is away for Terrell. He's in the end zone. He's got a penalty flag. There's a penalty flag. Ryan McNeil was defending. College football, it is marked off from the line of scrimmage, not down near the goal line. It'll be a 15-yard penalty and automatic first down. Defensive pass to the fan. First down. Well, this is the setup you were looking at a little earlier and talking about. That's legal. That's not. That is not. <laughs> he mugged him. He'd have caught it. Terrell, the it. man you were talking about, a play earlier, having beaten O'Neal. That word got back to uh, Bowden, and he got him by him again. Good call. It is a first down for Florida State. The ball is at the Miami 18-yard line. 53 seconds to play in the game. They are now definitely in field goal range. Ball was right on target, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Well, you try to score. You try to score safely. You don't take any big chances. But he's got to remember his field goal, his field goal kickers have been his problem all year. Amply slipping and sliding and will get a couple of yards to the 16, and that's all as Jesse Armstead takes him down. You know, even though Bowden has made three field goals today, I'm sure he still feels a little bit insecure in sending a young man out there in a big game like this to win it when they when the national championship may be on the line. Clock is running and coming up on 35 seconds. Weldon runs up behind the center. Looks like he wants to throw this ball in the ground, and he does. Now he's got 29 seconds. Now he's looking at third down and nine, but at least he'll have a chance to get a play from the sideline. This absolutely drives me crazy. I don't know why that quarterback can't just go ahead and call the play. How much time is wasted? Jerry Thomas is number 15. He figures to be the man that gets the call. All right, you got 29 seconds left, Keith. He is going to have to throw this ball. Oh, they're going to kick it now. Okay. They're kicking it on third down. Who's out there? Thomas or Thomas. Thomas. Thomas, eight of nine in his field goals. His long one, 40. This will be a 34-yard try, and this is for a win. This could be for a national championship. It's up. Missed it to the right. Thank you. 
He's won 10 games the last five years. There's only two other coaches in the history of college football that have done that. You know what just ran through my mind and uh, Todd Barry just pointed it out. Last year that kicks good. And the reason the reason that uh, they went for it on third down and not fourth down is that Casey Weldon had lost his shoe. So he took the snap on second down and threw it into the ground. They didn't have any timeouts left, so he didn't really have time to get his shoe back on and run one more play and then possibly kick it on fourth down. So Miami takes over the ball at the 10, and all they got to do is snap it. Toretta touched his knee and then threw the ball up in the air, and the prancing and dancing is on. Miami Hurricanes all over the field at Bill Campbell Stadium. The clock ticks in the history. Your final score, Miami, 17, Florida State, 16. And Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game are Stephen McGuire of Miami, 22 carries, 142 yards, caught four balls for 27 yards. For Florida State, Marvin Jones, linebacker, 12 tackles, one interception. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and assist those in financial need. That was a game. Stay tuned for the second half of the doubleheader. Regional games coming around the country, and we're about to leave you as Miami beats Florida State 17-16. And how close it was one more time for Bobby Bowden and the Florida State Seminoles. Miami is now in a chance to win another national championship. They play at Boston College and will be at home against San Diego State. So that's your final score right there.